TND Sports and exclusive video broadcast. video presents the Orlin and Cohen game of the week. Today it's the New York State semifinals in the Catholic League. Hi everyone and welcome to Holy Trinity High School here in Hicksville for two state semifinal games in the girls division of the New York State Catholic High School Athletic Association. My name is Mike Trezza, joined by Locust Valley girls coach Mike Gadone. Mike, we've got some of the best talent from all across New York State, some of the most heavy-hitting coaches from New York State, all here under one roof, set to square off tonight. This is truly March Madness here on Long Island. It really is a representation of the entire state. You have a team from Buffalo. You have a team from Staten Island. You have a team from New York City. You have a team here from out on the island. And like you said, it's it's just electric here tonight. You're going to see some heavy hitters both on and off the court. And in tonight's first game, it's Cardinal O'Hara. You see their roster up on your screen. They are the Hawks. They're from Tonawanda, New York, right outside Buffalo. A team that's big across the front line and can really shoot the lights out. They sure can. It's an excellent combination, as you mentioned. Tough inside, can really shoot. We've been watching the warm-ups here for a while. Number of kids who can shoot the ball from very deep, way beyond the high school arm. And, of course, they're led by Kyla Hayes. She's a junior, six feet tall, 20 points a game for Kyla, Mike. 20 points, 11 rebounds. When you can average a double-double against the competition they've played all year, that's saying something for sure. You can literally plug in a player like that and say, hey, just go and let, get me what you can. Let's talk about this St. Joseph by the Sea team out of Staten Island, the Vikings. They come in 20-7 and seven on the season. And a really athletic team that can really move it up and down the floor. As you mentioned, 20 and seven, playing a national schedule. Uh, they like to push the ball, a little dribble drive offense. Mostly play man on D, but they like to trap. Coach mentioned that they played a little zone this year. Uh, but again, they got here a little late. That's why we were a little delayed on the start. We'll see if that plays anything, especially early here in the game, Mike. They've got a couple big scorers up front, but the girl we're gonna be taking a look at is their leading scorer, that is number 21, Danielle Williamson. 23 points per game, 4.2 rebounds, 2.9 assists. When you're putting up those kinds of numbers against the, the people they've played, that really, again, says something. Anything over 20 uh, and 4 and 3 in the assists, that's a solid basketball player. We're a little late getting to this first game, but we're going to be back with the opening tip-off and all the action right after this. This is the Orlin and Cohen Game of the Week, brought to you by T&D Sports Video. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. He pumps it inside the gear. Here to launch is the great G hits. Robinson looks for help. Priester drives, banks it home. And that's going to do it. Sacred Heart with a convincing 10 point victory. Experience. Trusted. Proven. Excellence.
Over 20 years of professional sports video production. The industry standard. TND Sports Video Production. Whether it's a single game, a whole season, or a college recruitment video, TND Sports is your one stop video solution. TND Sports Video Production. All sports, all levels, all the time. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Holy Trinity High School in Hexville. Mike Trezza on hand, along with Mike Godone and our entire t and Sports video crew to bring you this first of two semifinal games. Starting lineups now being introduced, Mike, for St. Joe's by the Sea, the Vikings out of Staten Island. It's gonna be Angelina Hodgins, Madeline Lanza in the backcourt, along with Daniela Cordova and Danielle Williamson. The only big they have in the lineup is the sophomore forward. That's number 12, Maria O'Connell. And Cardinal O'Hara, the Lady Hawks out of Buffalo region, now being introduced. They will start with Kyla Hayes up front, along with Annabelle Day. Jordan Williams in the backcourt, along with Olivia Ballone Russell and Naima Blair. Mike, we spoke to both, co both coaches, and they said they really go about seven or eight deep. Uh, although at this time of the year, always somebody becomes a hero off the bench or you have some kind of special situation where you need somebody. So a uh, few more substitutions available for St. Joe's by the Sea. Uh, but Cardinal O'Hara are very comfortable with their short bench. Taking a quick look at our coaching matchup, it's Coach Nick O'Neill for Cardinal O'Hara. And for St. Joe's, it is Joe Suslack. And Mike, we had spoken before the game about Cardinal O'Hara coming in and haven't lost a game since December. That's uh, something to think about here, especially early, if this is a tight game. And the other thing, of course, St. Joe's got here a little late, so let's see if that does anything here early on. Here's the opening tip. It is won by St. Joe's. They are in the blue. They move left to right. Here in the first quarter, nice feed underneath, trying to get the ball in quickly to Angelina Hodgins. Hodgins draws contact and steps to the line. Good side for St. Joe's. Hodgins coming in at 22.1 points per game. Good on the first, nothing but net. No hesitation, Mike, just give me the ball and let me shoot it. Let me correct myself, it's Joe Suslack, not Suslack is the St. Joe's coach. First possession for Cardinal O'Hara. They're in the white, they move right to left. Drive inside and a bucket by Naima Blair. They're staying up, nice little clear out right there and a strong left-handed drive. There's a shot from Williamson, that's off the mark and it's gonna go over to O'Hara. St. Joe's will return the favor and they'll stay up a little bit. Here's Blair, she pulls up, dishes right wing, we've got to travel. A little over anxious here in the early going. But that's understandable. Big semifinal, a lot of people here watching many big time college coaches as well. We'll talk about that more as this first half unfolds. Nice feed on the run. 
Offensive rebound, St. Joe's. They pump it outside to Hodges. Good for three. Broke pressure relatively easily. Kick it out to your leading scorer. Nothing better. Cardinal O'Hara. Here's the dish inside. Lefty shot from Hayes. That's no good. Back the other way is Lanza. Here's Williamson. Left wing shot is no good. Back the other way. Layup is missed. Fast end to end action now in the right corner. Shot from three is good for Cordova. Looks like the late arrival here didn't really hamper St. Joe's at all. St. Joe's out to a quick eight to two lead. Blair on the dribble, gives it up to Hayes. Now it's for Lone Russell. Shot from Blair is too long. St. Joe's back the other way. Offensive board by O'Connell. She sticks it back and quickly Cardinal O'Connor, O'Hara I should say, wants to talk it over. That's a good idea right there. Take a quick timeout. 10-2, we're only about two minutes into this half. Mike, you can see it's pretty interesting. Cardinal O'Hara had been here, had warmed up quite a while. They looked like they had a lot of bounce to them. St. Joe's came in, had a quick warm up, but they look like the faster and more focused team at the moment. And Cardinal O'Hara looks like they don't really know what hit them at the moment. As we mentioned, St. Joe's comes in 20 and seven. The Hawks of Cardinal O'Hara come in 24 and two. There were only two losses in a tournament in DC back in December of last year, Mike. Very impressive, but uh, slow start right here. Let's see what they do out of this possession. The lone Russell on the drive, pulls up, in and out, and it's rebounded by Hodges. Here's a steal. Nice dish underneath, and an easy bucket from Hayes. O'Connell tries to get it along the sideline and lucky to keep the ball. Both teams trying to trap here a little early. Not a lot of real estate. Once you beat the first level of the trap, kind of got to get settled in and see what happens. Williamson gets it in and has it stolen. Back the other way of the Lady Hawks and we've got a whistle. Looks like we had a foul over there on Hodgins. A little too much contact coming up. We Cardinal Howard ran a great set coming out of that timeout, Mike. A little misdirection, X cut off the top. Didn't get a basket, but settled them down. St. Joe's leads 10 to four in the early going. Here's an end one for Hayes. Looks like they call the travel though. So wave off that basket from Hayes on a traveling call. Back the other way, nearly stolen. Williamson with possession. Dribbles to her right, leaves off for Cordova. Shot is up, it's no good. And we've got a whistle. St. Joe's trying to run that dribble drive offense. Spread it out, attack the middle. Got a good look there, came up short, but it looks like they're not having much problems at least getting the ball to the basket. We neglected to mention the officials at the outset. Kaz DeLillo, Reggie Fowler, and Randall Amy round out, of, round out of our officiating staff. Tough travel call right there. Fan right behind us, a little displeased with that call. I could understand his displeasure. If I was coaching, I would probably feel the same way. It's a lot easier sitting over here, though, Mike. Ball goes out of bounds, but it's going to stay with St. Joe's. Good call. Cardinal Howard got a piece of it. Williamson set to inbound. Gets it up high. Lons on the dribble. Tries to pump it into Hodgins. Lefty banker goes. O'Hara did a great job switching on the perimeter, 
but a solid move inside. Here's a quick move by Williams inside. And Williams draws some contact. She'll step to the line. You know, Mike, although O'Hara gave up that basket right there, good side for them to push the ball, get back on the line. Way to get into the game here early. Establish itself on the free throw line if possible. Jordan Williams at the line, gets the first one down, a 5'10 senior. Nine points a game. She's true on two of two. 12-6 is the St. Joe's lead. O'Hara will stay up, see if they can cause a little havoc here. Olivia DeMond is into the game for St. Joe's, first sub of the game. She goes right to work, and Williamson puts it in. St. Joe's breaking pressure easily. Madeline Lanza bringing the ball up, dishing and swishing to take it away from Clyde. Annabelle Day in the left corner. Shot from Blair won't go. Williamson off the glass and in. Strong drive coast to coast by Williamson. Now Cardinal O'Hara will slow it down just a little bit. And here's a steal. Hodgins off the glass. She banks it home. Uh, way too easy there. St. Joe's reading the pass into the middle, taking it down. I'm We've sure with their full timeout. We'll take another look at that last one, Mike. You can see they're trying to attack the middle off that four around one. Full take by Hodgins to finish. We're going to step away and be back with more right after this on T&D Sports, brought to you by Orlin and Cohen. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Welcome back everyone to Holy Trinity High School in Hexville. Mike Trezor, Mike Adone on hand, along with our entire t d Sports video crew to bring you this first of two semifinals. St. Joe's all over Cardinal O'Hara in the early going, lead by 12. Nice dish inside to Brittany Day, and Day could not get the ball home, but she's gonna step to the line. Little different set from Cardinal O'Hara that we've seen here in the first quarter. Nice adjustment by the coaching staff. They went 1-4 low, attacked the basket, get to the free throw line. Brittany Day, the older of the two Day sisters, she can't get the first one in. She's described as a great, senior. great track athlete going to Niagara. Lefty shooter, she rolls the second one in. It's 18 to seven, St. Joe's on top. Williamson puts it up with the right. Nice rebound by Williams. Gets it ahead to Day. Now inside. Offensive foul there, Mike. Called on Hayes. Both teams staying up. Both teams also breaking pressure relatively easily, but having a trouble finishing. Lanza tries to get the shot up. She gets blocked. And here's a steal by Lanza. Up to Hodgins, who banks it in. Hodgins establishing herself as the best player on the court early. Anytime there's a turnover or ball, they look right for her. Travel. That's at least the third traveling call on Cardinal O'Hara. That time it's Williams. Trying to figure if it's the... Nerves early or a really solid defense of St. Joe's. Could make an argument for either one. 
Lanza is harassed in the backcourt, and we've got a whistle going on Cardinal O'Hara. Going to be interested to see here, Mike, how long O'Hara sticks with this press. They're already in the penalty. St. Joe's has done a really better than average job of breaking pressure. Um, you are down, and you do want to stay up to try to get some turnovers. Correction, I'm sorry, they're not in the bonus. One more left to give. Olivia Valone Russell into the game for Cardinal O'Hara. St. Joe's back on offense with Lanza. Lanza pushing it up, pulling it back outside. Williamson around the horn. Cordova dishes off. Lanza looks inside for Williamson. She gets the shot up, and it will go down. It's rebounded by Brittany Day. They get it inside today. Turnaround shot, no good. Williamson dribbles outside, looks for help. Across the way to DeMunda. Cordova on the dribble. She tries to find Hodgins on the run, but throws it away. Probably the best half-court defensive possession of the game so far for O'Hara, causing that turnover. Under two minutes to go in the first. St. Joe's up by 13. Blair dribbles outside. Williamson picks her up. Nice look inside, and an easy basket for Hayes. Handled the double team, found Hayes underneath. Demanda off the glass, shot won't go. Rebound to O'Hara, nearly stolen. The lone Russell. Nice look underneath the Hayes for another easy bucket. That's the way you want to finish this quarter, Mike. Hayes with two easy baskets in a row. And we've got to travel, and now Cardinal O'Hara feel the momentum coming back. I was just going to say that amazing. Basketball is such a game of runs. You have two breaks, two baskets, a turnover. You're right back in the game, only down nine. Important possession, though, here to close out this quarter. Final minute of the first quarter. St. Joe's up by nine. They're looking for Hayes inside. We've got a tie up, but the possession arrow is going to keep it with O'Hara. No harm done. 18 on the shot clock. Blair, the primary ball handler, now on the drive. Here's Hayes, and she travels. Been a, been a tough call on her, but I have to agree with the officials so far. She is picking up her feet. Hodgins set to trigger it in. She does get it into Lanza. Lanza walks it up the floor. Gives it off to O'Connell. Back outside, Williamson, left wing. Lanza puts it up, shot won't go, gets her own. And finally, O'Hara's back the other way. Day stops and waits. Shot from the left wing goes for McGriff, who's now in. Nice confident stroke right there off a of transition. Shot's no good, battle for it underneath. We've got to travel, and O'Hara's going to get the ball. Off that turnover, looked like it was a tie-up. Maybe they're going to call a held ball. But there's three seconds left. Let's see what O'Hara can get off here. Valone Russell will put it in. Today, Day, can she get it off? She does, but it's off the mark. And that's the way the first quarter is going to end. So our score at the... After one quarter of play is St. Joe's by the C20, Cardinal O'Hara 13. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. 
running for the train derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Upset inside to Kieran. Kieran launches the great C head. Robinson looks for help. Priester drives, banks it home. And that's going to do it. Sacred Heart with a convincing 10 point victory. Welcome back to Holy Trinity High School in Hicksville. Mike Trezor, Mike Gadone. TND Sports covering two games tonight. This is the first of two semifinals. Mike St. Joe's by the sea, convincing early, but Cardinal O'Hara has now battled back just a little bit. Yeah, really the tale of, of, of about six minutes of domination for St. Joe's and then two minutes of Cardinal coming back. Lanza gets it to Cordova. Mishandled by Hodgins, she gets it back. Hodgins on the drive. Stops and pulls up, shots no good. Gets her own. Sends it cross court to Lanza. Now in the right corner, here's the shot, no good. Williamson keeps it alive, and she draws contact. Hayes got her on the hand. Still though, good defensive stance here for Cardinal O'Hara. They seem to be handling the dribble drive a little bit better, but you don't want to foul so early, but you got to take your chances. Williamson, the senior, only senior in the rotation, 23 points a game, and headed to Maris next year to play up in Poughkeepsie, New York. Nice to have that senior leadership and numbers. Lefty shot, gets the second one down, pumps it back up to a nine-point St. Joe's lead. Little diamond at one press here, a little different look. Hayes gets trapped. Gets it taken away. Here's Williamson on the drive. She draws the contact on the way to the rack, and she'll step to the line. Good move there by St. Joe's. Came up with a little different look on the press. Caught Cardinal O'Hara a little asleep. Coaching staff from Cardinal O'Hara asking for that one on the floor. Annabelle Day checks back and replaces her sister as Williamson's at the line. Gets the first one in. She'll get one more. In addition to the 23 points a game, four rebounds, three assists per game. Called by her coach, a tough competitor. Left corner today. Shot is partially blocked. And going to St. Joe, they try to get it ahead to Hodgins. Cross court, O'Connor. Williamson, shots no good, and Hayes boards. Ahead today, she can't get the shot to go. Offensive board and a stick back that time by McGriff. Real quick pace to start this second quarter. Nice back door. That looked like the Chaminade game from last week. <laughs> Got a call as Hayes got the ball. She got knocked around a little bit. Mike, I would have thought that this quicker pace really would have favored St. Joe's mostly, but O'Hara is now benefiting by pushing the ball up the floor as well off these missed shots and even makes. Day from three. Shots off the mark. Hodgins boards. Hodgins pushes it up, tries to go back door to Grimma, who's now in and throws it away. They've been going to that back door the last couple of possessions, haven't found a lot of success. O'Hara trying to stay close. Nice back door feed, and the shot is blocked by Williamson. Cardinal O'Hara going to the back door set right there, but a great response. Ballone Russell to put it in play. 
Gets it up top to Day. Pull up jumper from Day, that goes. Solid. Keeping a minute right now. Here's Hodgins on the drive. Shot is blocked by Day. Falone Russell is back the other way. Takes it strong to the rack and is gonna get rewarded with the trip to the line. Great job defensively and then pushing the ball the length of the floor. Seven point game now, Mike. You can see the tide starting to turn just a little bit. Now back to Cardinal O'Hara. Balone Russell, a 5'7 senior, steps to the line. Gets the first one down. You can see Russell playing with a lot of emotion, rallying her teammates together during the timeout when we were in a break. Cardinal O'Hara may be a little bit nervous early on, but now seems to have gotten over that and gotten themselves back in this game. It's now a five-point game. Couple of defensive stands, some baskets, free throws. And just like that, you're right back in it. Pulling the pressure off now, Mike. Under six minutes to go in the half. St. Joe's up by five. Grimma dribbles outside. They collapse on her. They get it out of her hands to Lanza. And we've got a whistle. Coach O'Neill not pleased with that call. Well, kind of hard to understand how he could tell because there were a lot of players from our vantage point looked like a reach. Jordan Williams checks back in for O'Hara. And O'Connell back into the game for St. Joe's replaces Grimma. They get it outside to Lonzo, who's got the good handles. On the right baseline, O'Connell nearly loses it, and now she does. That's going back over to O'Hara. Mike, if you're St. Joe's, you really got to get a set here to get Williamson and Hodges involved. You're talking about 44 combined points a game. They've been struggling. Look for some kind of set play coming back probably next time down the floor. Annabelle Day brings it up. Dishes off the lone Russell. Now up top to Williams. Williams with the shot inside. Now that travel, I can't agree with. That's your basic Euro step. I'm surprised they called that. Lonza brings it up, dishes off Hodgins. Hodgins pulls up, dishes off DeMonda. Here's Hodgins on the drive. Outside Lanza. Shot for three is no good. And it's rebounded by McGriff. Nice look underneath. Day puts it home. Oh, excellent job of handling pressure. Smart timeout here by St. Joe's. Going to see the replay. Nice job of handling pressure over the top. He got a two on one. Score, and we got a three point game, Mike. I want to ask you, Mike, if you're the team that's here on time and you're standing around waiting for the other team, does that in some way get your players a little bit nervous, a, a little bit uptight? Do you think that? Um, is what could have been going on with O'Hara at the beginning of this game? It can really work two ways, I think, Mike. You can get a little comfortable. You've been on the court for a little while, maybe even a little stale. Um, and then when you see St. Joe's came in, they got right on the layup lines, had about 15, 20 minutes, and came out flying. So if you're Cardinal O'Hara, you're saying, hey, what's going on here? This team just got off the bus, and, and they're rolling. And I think that might have played on their mind. But, uh, you know, now... They handle the pressure. They found their groove. And the one biggest thing I think you can say is their Cardinal Harris interior defense has taken away anything inside and has really forced St. Joe's to kind of struggle and pass the ball more on the perimeter. We talked about it in the intro. They have some nice size across that front line, and they're finally starting to utilize it in this game to their advantage. Absolutely, taking care of the basketball as well. Madeline lands on the dribble, gives it up outside, Williamson. Williamson tries to drive inside, instead she dishes. 
Here's DeMondo driving the baseline. Hayes with the steal. Fantastic half-court defense. Shot from Day is no good. Offensive board. Nice ball movement inside. Day comes away with it. Shot inside the paint is no good. Back the other way is St. Joe's. Williamson puts it up and draws the foul. Outstanding job right there by Williamson going down. Could have made an argument as our fans from Cardinal Howard are that she initiated the contact, but defender was not in the right position at the time. As we said before, big time players will come up in big time spots. Williamson trying to settle things down there is smart getting to the basket. Daniela Cordova che checks back in for St. Joe's as Williamson hits the first. Four point lead now for St. Joe's, 4-10 left in the half. Williamson good on two of two that trip, makes it a five point ball. Valone Russell on the drive. Here's the shot from Valone Russell, that shot's no good. Back the other way is Hodgins, stolen from her. Dish underneath the Hayes, she makes it count. Fantastic job, and they're getting discouraged off of a bad shot. Pull right back, get the steal and score. Lonza. Ooh, she looked like she shuffled her feet for a sec. A little bit. Williamson, driving baseline, trying to get it inside. Valone Russell with the steal. McGriff. Can't hit the shot, offensive board by Williams. And Williams is gonna draw some contact and head to the line. Mike, it's pretty simple. Cardinal Harris just outworking St. Joe's right now. They burned two early timeouts to talk about things, got themselves back, but it's simply a matter right now of just hustle. Blair back into the game for Cardinal O'Hara. First free throw is good. Second one won't go down. And it's rebounded by Hodgins. Lanza is called this time for traveling. You had mentioned that before, that they were getting away with a little bit of shuffle. Not on that one. Nice call, my partner. 26-24, this lead that was over 10 early has been shrinking by the moment. Left baseline drive from Williams. Nice shot, that goes. O'Hara spreading it out, getting to the high post. Dish it out and drive. We're tied at 26, and Coach Suslak needs a minute. We'll step away and we'll take a break with him. Team's tied at 26. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Coach Suslak saw his team sprint out to an early lead, Mike, and then saw that lead evaporate, felt the need to talk it over. Just a little under three minutes here to go in the quarter. Big momentum change for sure. Let's see what St. Joe's does out of this timeout. A little bit more of a set play right here. Good backdoor. Nice backdoor. Williamson puts it in. Couldn't ask for anything better out of the timeout. Beautiful dish from Lanza. Good side-to-side -side movement, Day for three. Oh yeah! Good ball movement, big time three. Cardinal O'Hara with their first lead of the game. Williamson backs up on the dribble. Now advances. 
to Lanza. Nice move inside, can't get the shot down. And we're gonna stay here as we've got a foul going on Cardinal O'Hara. Strong drive in the middle. A little bit of a bump right here. A little four down look out of bounds here. Oh, going to be in a penalty here, Mike. So that's a that's a big advantage right here. The last two minutes going to the free throw line. Hayes picks up her second. That's big as well. Yeah, that's a tough call right there. Lanza at the line. She can't get the first one down. Madeline Lanza, the junior point guard. Scrappy, a facilitator. That'll help her confidence, though. So having a little trouble finishing at the rim. Get on the free throw line, make your second. 29 all as O'Hara turns the ball over with Williams. You know, Mike, I think that's something we're going to talk about probably at halftime, the number of travel calls here. Might be a reason for that. Cordova up top looks inside. Between the legs dribble to Williamson. Williamson. Travels. Called on to push off actually, Mike. Great defense perimeter wise by Cardinal O'Hara. Little frustration on Williamson's part. Pushed off. We got a tie ball game here just under two minutes. Game being officiated very tightly by Kaz and crew. The lone Russell gets it up top. Today, Day dishes off the lone Russell. Shot from the right wing is no good. Williamson boards ahead to Hodgins. Shot from the right corner. Bounces up and Blair comes the other way. Blair with the fake pass. Nice board by Williams, another chance, and Cardinal O'Hara is going to draw contact. Two fouls in that, well, two offensive rebounds, I should say, Mike, and a foul in that sequence. Both teams are in a bonus now. As you mentioned, game being called quite tightly here in the second quarter, especially. Foul goes on O'Connell, and Hayes steps to the line. First one's down. O'Hara up by a point. Kyla Hayes, just the junior, but six feet, 20 points a game, 11 boards a game, and shoots 49% from the field. We had a tie up right there on the, on the rebound, possession to St. Joe's. Let's see if they go to that more traditional set that they ran the last time down the floor. Brittany Day is back in as Lanza brings it up. Williamson left wing launches for three. Shot is no good. Ballone Russell gets it across the court to Blair. Ballone Russell with a nice move. Today in the left corner, that shot won't go. Board is by Hodgins. Hodgins on the drive, puts it up lefty, no good. Gets her own, that shot won't go. Three second ball underneath. Turns it over. Forty-eight seconds left, St. Joe's by a point. Well, actually O'Hara by a point. Another turnover, Mike. O'Connell nearly traveled. We've got a kick ball. Could have had a travel call there as well. The Cardinal Hara faithful here in Hicksville are thinking there might be a little home cooking going on. But really, they've called it both ways pretty tight. McGriff is back in for O'Hara. They get it up top to Lanza. Right wing Cordova on the dribble to her left. Here's Hodgins for three, shots off the side of the rim. Going to have a reach in foul there, Mike, I think on the interior.
Coach O'Neill feeling like he's getting a bad whistle in this game, Mike. He's, he's looking down, looking for another substitution. Hayes is going to check back in for O'Hara as Lanza is going to step to the line. Late in this quarter, Mike, St. Joe's settling for a little bit too much of quick threes. Seems when they've run some sets, they've had a little bit more success. Off the side of the rim with the first one is Lanza. Averages four and a half a game, but four rebounds a game for a girl her size. Absolutely scrappy, as her coach described. Gets the second one to go. And now we're tied at 30. Blair looks across the court. Here's Day for three. Shots up in the air, but won't go down. A near steal, but controlled by O'Connell. Gets it across to Williamson. Oh, Play coming near our table. Shot inside, won't go. Williamson back the other way for St. Joe. And that's gonna do it. That's the end of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a good one. Our score at the end of the first half is St. Joe's by the C30, Cardinal O'Hara 30. We'll step away and be back with some halftime coverage right after this. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. A throw, heats it deep. What a catch that time. Harmon will take it himself. Nice roll, breaks a tackle, he's in the clear. Harmon in for the touchdown. Takes it himself, down to the goal line, he's in. Bilal is gonna pass, airs it out, end zone. Touchdown, Oceanside! Experience. Trusted, proven, excellence. Over 20 years of professional sports video production, the industry standard, TND Sports Video Production. Whether it's a single game, a whole season, or a college recruitment video, TND Sports is your one stop video solution. TND Sports Video Productions. All sports, all levels, all the time. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland and Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Top of the key. Williams attacks right, spins, kicks it out. Chris Williams fakes, drives, and throws it down. Chris Williams with the right hand. View drives baseline, stops, kicks it out. Taylor left corner three. Bottom. Big time delivery from James Taylor Jr. More at half court. Hoist for the tie. No good. And St. John the Baptist is moving on to the championship.
Experience. Trusted. Proven. Excellence. Over 20 years of professional sports video production. The industry standard. TND Sports Video Production. Whether it's a single game, a whole season, or a college recruitment video, TND Sports is your one stop video solution. TND Sports Video Productions. All sports, all levels, all the time. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. it inside to Kiernan. Kiernan launches the great G. Hayes. Robinson looks for help. Priester drives, banks it home. And that's going to do it. Sacred Heart with a convincing 10 point victory. Williams top of the key. Williams attacks right, spins, kicks it out. Chris Williams fakes, drives, and throws it down! Chris Williams with the right hand. View drives baseline, stops, kicks it out. Taylor left corner three, bottom! Big time delivery from James Taylor Jr. More at half court, poised for the tie! No good! And St. John the Baptist is moving on to the championship. Welcome back, everyone, to Holy Trinity High School here in Hicksville, New York. Mike Trezza, Mike Adone on hand for two semifinals games. This is the first of two, Cardinal O'Hara, St. Joe's by the Sea. And, Mike, this was a, a game that started off all the momentum with St. Joe's, and little by little, Cardinal O'Hara worked their way back in. Really a tale pretty much of two different quarters. Absolutely. You know, Mike, the scoring really tells the tale for St. Joe's by the sea. In the first quarter, Angelina Hodgins averages 22 a game, all 11 of her points first quarter. Second quarter, Daniel Williamson comes in with 12 points. Eight in the second quarter, six for six from the foul line. But St. Joe's only with one field goal entirely in the second quarter. So the defense clamped down big time for Cardinal O'Hara. Do we have any scoring leaders we can go over um, so for, that'll point us in the right direction? For absolutely. The so half. for St. Joe's, you had Williamson with 12, Hodgins with 11, and then for O'Hara, Annabelle Day with 7, Kyla Hayes with 9, a little bit more spread out. You can see, again, that's symptomatic of what you saw in the first half itself, kind of two players taking over one at a time for St. Joe's, and a little bit more spread out scoring for Cardinal O'Hara. Before we talk about strategic adjustments, Mike, I want to talk about something you and I spoke about in the first half. That was the preponderance of traveling calls against both teams, but specifically against Cardinal O'Hara. Do you address that with your team at halftime? And what can they do? Uh, what can you do as a coach to say, hey, girls, this is the way they're calling it. We have to make the adjustment. Yeah, it's really, I think, a tale of two things as well. The travel's due to nerves. And as you mentioned before, staying on the floor a long time before the game, trying to get into the flow. 
Um, and many of the calls were legitimate. Secondly, though, uh, a point of emphasis in girls basketball downstate on Long Island for officials this year has been travels. So the team from Buffalo not used to the game being called that way probably. So hopefully they make that adjustment. But, yeah, as a coach, um, you don't want to get too overzealous with it and make it you know, too much of a thing that's going to get in their head in the half. Just tell them, relax, catch the ball, plant your feet, and let's go from there. You know it's being called tight. We're going to step away and be back with the second half and all the action right after this. This is Team D Sports Video brought to you by Orlin and Cohen. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orlin and Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Williams, top of the key. Williams, tacks right, spins, kicks it out. Chris Williams, fakes, drives, and throws it down! Chris Williams with the right hand. View drives baseline, stops, kicks it out. Taylor left corner three. Bottom! Big time delivery from James Taylor Jr. More at half court, hoist for the tie! No good! And Steve John the back. Second half about to get underway from here at Holy Trinity, Mike Trezor, Mike Godone, and our Team D Sports video crew bringing you the first of two semifinals. Valone, Russell gets her own. Outside to Blair, straight ahead three, too strong. Nice strong rebound and put back by Hayes. Hayes asserting herself right away in the second quarter, in the third quarter, as she started earlier in the game. Lanza dishes off Hodgins. Hodgins, shots no good, and rebounded by Annabelle Day. Day to Belong Russell, right wing three. Yes, sir! Tough three. We're going to stop the game right now just to check on Hodgins. I believe she went down hard in the last possession. But what a start here for Cardinal O'Hara in this third quarter. St. You know, Joe's was getting to the basket early in the game, Mike, and then O'Hara made some adjustments. What did they do to prevent that from keeping on happening? They're switching all the passes on the perimeter and just plugging the middle, and St. Joe's was able to finish a little bit better earlier on and not anywhere close to that now. We've got contact inside and a whistle away from the play. Naima Blair whistled for the personal away from the ball. Not sure I saw what happened on that. They get it into Hodgson. She saves it from going out of bounds. O'Connell looks inside. A great great set, point Mike. play. Fantastic, fantastic cut off the inbounds. Found Hodges going to the basket. This time she finishes with the end one. See if she can convert. Hodgins at the line, bounces it off the front of the rim. Back the other way quickly is Williams. She stripped. Cordova, right wing three, no good. Offensive board, St. Joe's, it's Lanza. There's Lanza again. She throws it away. Balone Russell. Two on one with Blair. Blair loses it, but they'll keep the ball. Great job hustling back. This is the time you cannot afford to be watching the play from the backcourt. You need all five players coming back on defense. Olivia Balone Russell. Left wing three, no good. Bounce around underneath, Williamson comes away with it, and she walks. Little uneven start, foul-wise. But Mike, both teams were kind of clamoring about fouls. It was even in the first half, nine each. So O'Hara thought they were getting the short end of the stick, 
it turned out to be not that way. They get it into Blair. She dribbles between the legs. Gives it up up top. Now it's stolen. Cordova over to O'Connell off the glass and in. Great job defensively and conversion. Got to have those. O'Connell with another near steal, but this time O'Hara is going to keep the ball. Annabelle Day. She's fouled by Cordova. Very strong player off the dribble. Day, as we mentioned, the younger of the two Day sisters, but 16 points a game and almost 40% from the field. So comfortable with the ball in her hands. Left wing three for Day. That goes. It might be night, Mike, but it's daytime for Cardinal O'Hara. Williamson right corner. Lanza looking inside. Feeds the post. Now left corner three is way off the mark from Cordova. Below Russell tries to look inside, but she led Williams a little too long. Nice quiet confidence here right now by St. Joe's bringing the ball, getting into their stuff. Lands up top Cordova. She penetrates. Nice rebound by Day. Looks ahead to Williams. Day, right wing three. That's a little too strong. Ball bounces up in the air. It's going St. Joe's way. Looks like she has unlimited range. That was from about 25 feet. But a great shot, not a rush. The lone Russell, or I should say DeMonda, walks it up the floor. Hands off to Williamson. Right corner, Williamson. Now she drives into the paint, puts up the shot, draws the contact. One of the first times in probably the last seven or eight minutes, Mike, where you've seen St. Joe's be able to turn the corner, create some contact, and get on the foul line that way. They were finishing those moves earlier in the game. Then it went cold. Now let's see what happens here. They're sticking with that dribble drive, which is what they've been doing all year. That's what got you here. That's what's going to keep you here. Brittany Day is back into the game. Step into the line is Williamson. Good free throw shooter. Rattles the first one in. That's what your seniors do, Mike. It's a rematch of last year's final, which was won by St. Joe. 82 to 60 over O'Hara. His day. She pulls up. Hayes up top today. Long three. Oh, yes. Daytime once again. Williamson with a right wing three of her own. She says, What you can do, I can do better. Below Russell. Drives baseline, now sends it back up top today. Running shot by McGriff is no good. Back the other way is DeMunda. Gets it inside Hodgins, Hodgins draws the foul. Hodgins, Mike, very physical, very strong player. We spoke to the coaching staff earlier. Said she's getting some biggest looks. You can see why, because of that physicality. Can shoot from the outside, can go in the inside. This is where at 22 points a game, got to hit these free throws right now, get this game even. Jordan Williams is back in for O'Hara as Hodgin sets steps to the line. Being looked at by St. John's, Providence. Can't get the second one in. 
Back the other way is Williams. Hayes on the drive, banks it in. Real easy on the inside, surprisingly, but a great job keeping that ball alive. Lands on the dribble, sends it across. DeMunda feeds the post. Hudgens with the left. Hodgins, I should say, with the left hand. Shot's no good. But oh, nice Hodgins deal. with the steal banks it in. That's what they're going to have to do, Mike. They're going to have to get the ball in the front court, create some opportunities. Below Russell, up top to Hayes. Hayes leaves it off. Below Russell for three. That goes. And she lets them know about it, but a big time shot. You can see, still in the first half, kicking everybody together, and now she's got them going. O'Hara back up by four. Shot from the right baseline's no good. Annabelle Day with the board. Below Russell, two on one. To McGriff. McGriff takes a bite. Fantastic job breaking out. Catching St. Joe's on their heels in the backcourt. You know, Mike, pretty interesting. We had talked at halftime off air about the fact that St. Joe's looked like they were playing at a much faster speed in the first half and could Cardinal O'Hara stay with them. Now it's the complete opposite. It looks like St. Joe's running out of gas here a little bit and Cardinal O'Hara is really pumped up. I guess 11 hours on a bus, an overnight stay here in Long Island hasn't done anything to take their aggressiveness and their strength away from them. Hey, is he Coach Suslak's huddle. As we said, they hit the floor flying after being a little bit late to this game. They warmed up quickly, came out strong, came out quick, Mike. But now they're really in the struggle in this game. They are. The only positive I can say when you watch their body language on the court, there's a quiet confidence to them. You don't win 22 games or 20, go 20 and 7 in their league and, and around the country like they did without poise and without some big time players. So O'Hara, all credit to them, but St. Joe's, they're not done yet. St. Joe's trails by six, 250 left in the third. They get it to Williamson, she's guarded tightly, gives it up to DeMunda. On the drive, banks it in. Great job, a great finish finding the seam right there. Olivia DeMunda, the sophomore, pitches in. They get it inside to Hayes. Nice shot, she rolls it in. That's a big time post move. Catch the ball, gathered a couple of dribbles, powered up strong. O'Hara by half a dozen. Hodgins on the drive, fouled on the way to the hoop. Hodgins a little more comfortable, it seems, Mike, with the ball in her hands. Attacking. They've tried to get her in the low post a couple of times. Had a little trouble finishing, she came out. Needed to use her a little bit more as a screener, I think, as well, and that'll open things up. The dribble drive is a great offense, but not a lot of screening involved in it. Cordova's back in for St. Joe's as her teammate Hodgins steps to the line. Hodgins, 22 points a game, 12 rebounds a game, as well as three assists per contest. As we mentioned before, 11 points in the first quarter, nothing in the second, but now she's coming along. Hodgins gets the second one in. 50 to 46. Down to two minutes to play in the third. Malone Russell's been key to this run. Now she loses it. Back the other way's Cordova. Lefty drive, no good. Bounced around underneath. Williams thought she was fouled and the ball's gonna stay with Cardinal, uh, gonna stay with St. Joe's. St. Joe's being opportunistic on the half court D, pushing the ball, a little rush on a three on two, but they were lucky enough to keep the ball. A little discussion here amongst the officials. Looks like we're in good shape though, gonna stay with St. Joe's. First of two state semifinals. St. Joe's was up early, now they trail by four. 
as Lanza dribbles. Back Finds door. Hodgins on the run. Beautiful dish. There's your back door. That's what they've been looking for. Finally starting to get some confidence back in the half court offense. The lone Russell gets it to Day on the run. They saved the possession and now they throw it away. Williamson almost lost it, now she does. Ballone Russell will take it herself. She dishes to Hayes for the hoop and the harm. You can see no worries with Cardinal Hara. Turn the ball over, get it right back. Hey, let's push it up the floor. Let's get it to our big girl and good things are happening. Wow, Olivia Ballone Russell has been a key to this Cardinal O'Hara run. She found Hayes and Hayes completes the three-point play. She's playing on a different level these last two quarters. Lanza drives inside, kicks it back outside, Cordova. Right corner three is no good, tussle for it underneath. It's gonna go back over to O'Hara. But all props to number three, Madeline Lanza, five foot four, she's in there scrapping on every offensive rebound, Mike. Down to a minute to go in the quarter. O'Hara by five, looking to extend. Day, left wing to her sister. The long Russell for three, oh, rolls out. Gonna get a foul though on the rebound, Mike. Wow, that straight ahead three pointer was halfway down, rolled around the rim, but would not drop in. That ball literally went almost under the cylinder and spun out. Not a shooting foul, as you mentioned, just was on the rebound. Straight ahead, three. Below Russell. Knocks it down. Hey, no problem. I'll just step back four feet and drill the next one. Nice back door, but it's broken up and stolen by Day. Now stolen back by Hodgins. Williamson, shots in oh. and out. Furious end-to-end -end action. Day tries to find her sister, it goes off her hands. Here's Hodgins, lefty banker won't go. Day grabs the rebound, taken away from her, but it's gonna go O'Hara's way. You were talking about pace, Mike. There is no stop in either one of these teams. We're down to five seconds left. Let's see if O'Hara gets a shot off. Here's Hayes. Shot is blocked at the buzzer. Both players go tumbling to the floor, but no foul called on the play. That's the way the third quarter is going to end. Our score after three, Cardinal O'Hara 56, St. Joe's 48. We'll step away and be back with the fourth right after this. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Williams, top of the key. Williams, attacks right, spins, kicks it out. Chris Williams, fakes, drives, and throws it down! Chris Williams with the right hand. View, drives baseline, stops. Start of the fourth quarter here at Holy Trinity in Hicksville. Cardinal O'Hara leads St. Joe's 56-48. Mike Trezor, Mike Adone on hand to bring you all the action. St. Joe's will inbound in the blue, moving right to left. Hodgins, right corner to 
DiNapoli is now in. Hodgins, she'll try from the right corner. She can't get it down. We've got a whistle. A couple of quick threes there by St. Joe's by the sea coming into this first possession of the fourth quarter. Probably didn't need to go up that quickly. Foul in the backcourt. Cardinal Howard now gets to bring the ball up. Looks like a little bit of a half-court trap now by St. Joe's. Nope, they're going to fall back. Annabelle Day brings it up. She's picked up by Williamson. Day from the right wing. That shot's in and out. Chased down by O'Connell. Back the other way is St. Joe. Lanza. Left wing three. That won't go. It's rebounded by Valone Russell. She'll bring it up herself. Right corner three from Day. Shots too long. Williamson boards. Back the other way is Hudgens. Lefty banker goes. Nice under control move right there by Hodgins. Caught the ball squared up. Wasn't looking for contact, put it through. Hayes brings it up herself slowly this time across the timeline. Directs traffic with the left. Now hands off to Annabelle Day. We've got an offensive foul as she cleared out with the left. Number 12. Kyla Hayes, she was there, but she moved at the last minute, kind of threw a hip in. Didn't need to do that. I was going to say, Mike, it seems kind of trite to say, but with six and a half minutes to go, that, that was a big defensive possession for St. Joe's, but it really was. McGriff is back in for O'Hara, as is Naima Blair. It's three fouls on Hayes. A lot of time left, but. I'd go right at him right now. Hodgins gives it off to Lanza. Lanza tries the glass. Bank is not open late. Blair is back the other way, but she walked. Travel there. Good job by St. Joe staying up, pushing the pace. Got to look here to Hodgins and Williamson to really take over this last fourth quarter. Another outstanding call by Cosnerillo. Made a great call at the end of the third quarter as well. DeMonda on the drive has her shot partially blocked. We've got a furious scramble on the floor. Wow, bodies flying everywhere, Mike. Tough call out of that. They let it go, but then McGriff kind of caught her from behind. Had to call that. These girls really getting after it. They know a trip to Hofstra tomorrow is on the line for both teams. It's win or go home time. Call right here, Mike. Another tight call. They call the travel on the sideline. You have three officials at this time of year. A lot of, a lot of the time, these games are officiated by two. When you get to the States, it's three. So things that got you were able to get away with earlier on, you're not able to get away with now. It's that extra set of eyes. We mentioned it early on. This game's been called very tight in terms of fouls and travels throughout the evening. You have three college officials here as well. Here's a steal by Cordova. She drives, she hits, and she's going to the line. Can't emphasize enough how big that play was right there. You turn the ball over on an inbounds. You get it back, you score on an M1. Now you get to see a little bit of excitement from St. Joe's. Let's see if they can build on that. We have a 58-50 score. It's actually 56-52. We'll make that correction. Let's see if St. Joe's can knock this down here. Cordova called by her coach, a player that likes to push tempo and can finish. She showed it on that play. And boy, did she ever. Gonna get a Wait, that was that looked a little <laughs> out of sync there. Lane violation. Stepped in early. Cordova seemed like she delayed her shot just a little bit and it threw O'Hara off. Cordova now puts it up but can't complete the three-point play. 
Hayes is back the other way. She hands it off to Annabelle. Annabelle leaves it for Valone Russell. Hayes in the paint. They double her. She gets the shot up and in. Unbelievable turn and score right there in traffic. I don't know how she snuck that one home, Mike. We're going to take a look at it here. <laughs> double team, almost a triple team, turns, puts it up, and scores. And Coach O'Neill wanted an and one on that play. I could see that. If I'm St. Joe's, I could be asking for a three-second call as well. So both, both coaches trying to work the officials here. But you got a 58-52 game, a little under six minutes to go. Trip to Hofstra, as I mentioned, Mike, on the line. That game will be tomorrow at 3 p.m. Talk about what a thrill it is for high school girls to get to a college gymnasium like Hofstra. I know you've been there. Your teams have done very, very well when they've gotten there. But talk about the excitement that the girls feel playing on that big court with plenty of room for all their family and friends. It's an amazing experience. We were very lucky at Locust Valley to get there a couple times over the last few years. That is an arena. That is a full court, 5,000 seat arena. Almost the polar opposite of what you have here today. Walked up the floor by Lanza. She gives off to Hodges. Hodges, night nice drive. St. Joe's run a little flex offense there. Turn the corner and score. I think they need to do a little bit more of that in this quarter, Mike, and add in maybe some screens. Annabelle Day brings it up. Hayes. Left wing three is well short. O'Hara tried to keep it alive. Good timeout by O'Hara there, but that's the danger of calling timeout after a score of your own. You give the other team an opportunity to set up their offense. Did a great job, St. Joe's, right there. St. Joe's not going away. Trails by just four. Under five minutes to play in the game. The drive by Cordova. She finishes again. All of a sudden, fine in the middle. Cordova stepping up big here. Day looks inside, trying to find Hayes. Turnaround dish, and that shot from Williams goes. Great unselfish play. Jordan Williams with the back cut, catch and score, back up by four. Lanza with the spin. Gives it up to DiNapoli, who puts one in. They call it a two, very close to being a three. They're going to take a look at it. Are they allowed to come over to the monitor here, Mike, and look? I told our official Reggie Fowler at the beginning he was not allowed to use our <laughs> equipment. <laughs> he got a chuckle out of it. They did get it right, though. That was a two. <laughs> 60 to 59, 420 left in the game. Annabelle on the dribble, trying to get into the paint. She pulls up right wing. Williams, right corner, cross-court pass. Good ball movement for Lowe Russell. Her three won't go. Hayes tries to keep it alive. It's taken from her by Hodgins. Big time Williams defense. Napoli, no good. Back the other way is Hayes. Hayes splits defenders, but draws contact. Great job by the big girl, taking the ball almost the length of the floor, attacking, causing the foul. No one's in the penalty at the moment. Three fouls for O'Hara, only two for St. Joe's. Oh, that's nice too easy. look inside to Williams. That's too easy off that inbounds. Got a back screen, lost side of the ball. Cordova drives again. Back the other way and going O'Hara's way. Cordova a little overly aggressive on that one. Didn't really quite have the lane. 
Malone Russell has been such a key. The 5'7 senior guard headed to D2 Duville next year. Annabelle Day switches hands, puts the shot up. Looking for the call are the fans behind us, the O'Hara fans, but they don't get one. O'Hara keeps the ball, though. No harm done there. You got a big battle right here inside with both Hayes and Hodgins, reminiscent of an old player of mine, Rose Bruno, who could do both inside and outside, drive the ball and shoot it. Demunda is back in. Williams to Hayes. Right baseline jumper is no good. Hayes controls. Shots too long, and Lanza comes away with it. Lanza trying to shake her defender, get to the head, Cordova. The drive with the left. Oh, yes. I'll tell you, Cordova here, only at five foot four, asserting herself, really keeping this game as close as it's been. We're going to step away and be back with the final 254 right after this. O'Hara up by five. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Williams, top of the key. Williams, attacks right, spins, kicks it out. Chris Williams, fakes, drives, and throws it down! Chris Williams with the right hand. Drives baseline, stops, kicks it out. Taylor left corner three. Bottom! Big time delivery from James Taylor Jr. More at half court. Hoist for the tie. No good. And St. John the Baptist is moving on to the championship. Let me correct the score. Oh, Cardinal O'Hara is up by 162-61. Under three minutes left in the game. This has been a good one. The long Russell to Williams, right corner. Here's Day. The long Russell. Day drives baseline, puts it up, and is blocked by Hodgins. Huge block right there. Cordova drives inside and draws contact. Fantastic defense there by Hodgins. Gets the ball up the floor. St. Joe's, the opportunity to take the lead back, which they haven't had in quite a while. Interesting play right there, Mike, before St. Joe's went to kind of like a 2-3 look, ran two players at the ball, didn't phase O'Hara at all. Cordova at the line was quiet early, but it's been very active down the stretch. Off the mark on the first free throw. Junior guard, as we mentioned, nine points a game. She's really been the best offensive option for St. Joe's since halftime. Cordova misses on both, that hurts. Tough one right there, a chance to take the lead or tie. That second one looked like it was gonna drop. If you're a guard, Mike, and you like to drive late in the game, you got to be able to hit those free throws. You have to, and that, that looks like a little bit of nerves in this, or, or even fatigue. This has been a high-level basketball game. Valone Russell brings it up the floor. She's picked up by Lanza. Across the floor, here's Dave for three. Knocks it down! Fantastic job of driving the basket, kicking the ball opposite, and finding your dead-eye shooter. Hodgins up top, Williamson for three. Shots no good. Williams battles for it underneath, and we've got a tie up. It's going to keep the ball with St. Joe. Good ball movement by St. Joe's. Not a bad look on that three. That's why you got to scrap on the rebounds as well to keep possession. 
DiNapoli gave them good minutes before, and now she's back in the game. We have a whistle and a foul going on O'Hara. Called off the ball. That's a big call, too. That, that's on number 12, Kyla Hayes, Mike. That's her fourth foul. I didn't see what happened. Also put St. Joe's back on the line. Under two minutes to play in the game, but you can't have Kyla foul out of this game. That would be an absolute fiasco for Cardinal O'Hara as Angelina Hodgins at the line, the junior combo guard. That's a tough foul at this point. In the the contest to call. They've been scrapping and playing so hard. Got to settle and knock the second one down, though. Hodgins can't get the first one down, but she does hit on the second. Got another game coming your way in about 25 minutes. As the lone Russell is bottled up, she gets it to Hayes. Hayes stops, pops, can't get it in. Hodgins is back the other way. Knocked away. But it's going to stay with St. Joe's. No harm done. 19 on the shot clock. Probably didn't need to kick the ball out at that point. She was pretty deep in the lane. Cardinal O'Hara up by three. We're under a minute and a half to play in the game. O'Connell is back in, replaces DiNapoli, who gave them, again, a little bit of a lift in a brief stint. Hodgins drives the paint once again, hangs on the rim, and then drops in. This time gets the roll. Smart play, though, there. Drive the basket. You don't need a three. Plenty of time left. Williams to Hayes. Hayes goes right to work. Valone Russell stops, pops. We've off. got a whistle and a foul going on Cardinal O'Hara. Yeah, off the rebound. Tried to, Russell tried to get her own rebound. A little over anxious. That's where you got to be so careful right now. Everything is two shots. You can't get frustrated. You have to play that fine line of being really aggressive but not putting the other team on the line. Again, chance for St. Joe's. Lands at the line. Rattles the first one home. We are tied at 65 all, just under a minute to play. If they take the lead here, huge psycho psychological advantage, and they do. St. Joe's up by a point. 58 seconds left, and we're going to take a break with them. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Coach O'Neill wanted to talk it over there, Mike. What was he talking about? Veteran move right there by the coach. It's under a minute. Call timeout. You can advance the ball without it being passed in. So now no worries of a press. Interesting, though, in their huddle, didn't draw anything up. It was just a matter of just getting the ball, settling his team down, and saying, hey, let's do what we do best. But huge advantage to get the ball across half court. O'Hara trails for the first time in a while. We're down to 55 seconds left. They're down a point. Ballone Russell looks inside. Now gets it outside to Williams. Williams looking to drive. Right elbow jumper. That's off the mark. Battle for it underneath. We've got a tie up. It's keeping it with O'Hara. Important point here, Mike. St. Joe's only with two team fouls. They have two to give. They can be a little extra aggressive in these possessions. They get it up top. Annabelle Day launches for three. 
Ball's loose underneath, and Cordova comes away with it. Looks like they got a timeout by St. Joe's. Not sure if they're going to be able to advance the ball because it looks like they took a dribble. Coach Suslack, you take a look at his huddle. As we mentioned, this is a rematch of last year's New York State Final, won by St. Joe's, but Coach Suslack told us he knows that Cardinal O'Hara is a year better, a year older, a year more mature. And probably a year more motivated to come back, especially down here and win this game. But all game long, we saw it in the huddle just here as well, Mike. St. Joe's, there's just that quiet confidence. There are a couple of smiles right there. Uh, not a lot more pressure you can ever find in a game with 34 seconds to go. They can literally bring this down. There's 29 on the clock, only a five-second difference. Williamson is going to trigger it in. Looking to get Hudgens. She can't. Instead, she gets Lanza. She's in the backcourt, but no call. You know what, Mike? I thought that was backcourt. She established position and jumped into the backcourt. Let's take a look. Good defense right here. Stops, jumps. Ah, oh, that's, wow, I don't know. That's why I'm not paid to be an official, although I play one sometimes on the sidelines. Lands at the line, she front rims the first one as the crowd behind us gets loud. All right, big one right here. Hit this one, it would take a three to beat you. Can't get the second one down, Hayes rebounds and is grabbed by Hodgins. All right, loose ball foul, not a bad one there. Not a bad, not a bad call. They have a foul first. O'Hara was going to take a timeout. Looks like they are not going to take it. Only the third team foul on St. Joe's. This is where things get really interesting, Mike, from a coaching standpoint. All right, so O'Hara looks like they're going to take the timeout and advance the ball. There was a foul on the play. All right, so what do you do? You got 29 seconds left. You're down one. Do you hold for the last shot? Do you go right away, trying to go maybe a little two for one? I should be asking you that question. You're the coach who's been to Hofstra. All right, well, listen, I think there's many ways you can play this, but you have to know your team. Uh, if it's me, Cardinal Harris done a really nice job protecting the ball, attacking the basket, looking for shots. I don't know if I would hold it right here. I think I would just say, just play and say, hey, ladies, let's get the best shot we can, all right? You know, on the other side, St. Joe's can give a foul late in the shot clock, or late in the clock. There is no shot clock. So it's very, very interesting. But if it's me, I'm going to go for it right now. I'm not going to hold for one. I think there's just too, more, too much room for error. With St. Joe's having a foul, they can foul them two seconds left, and they would have to execute another play again. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be sitting behind the camera this time and not on the sideline. You and I, in talking about this game during the week and talking with coaches during the week, expected a really, really close contest, and this has been a terrific it, game. Winner on their way to Hofstra for a 3 p.m. start tomorrow. It's had a little bit of everything. It's a joy to watch. This is what high-level girls high school basketball is all about. They get it into Hayes. Hayes looks around. 25 seconds left in the game. Hands off to Annabelle Day. Day has Lanza on her, trying to shake her. We're down to 15. Inside the Hayes. They collapse on her and they foul her. All right, foul given. Still not in the penalty. Now we're at 13.4 seconds here, guys. They're going to have an out of bounds. DeMunda is back in for St. Joe's. Defensive sub. All right, now any foul, they go to the line. So St. Joe's has to be aggressive, but not no ticky-tack fouls. Oh, my goodness. They called a offensive foul on a moving screen. That is a tough, tough call. And I thought it was on Hayes, and I thought they were going to foul her out of this game, which would have been absolutely disastrous. So what Cardinal Harrod did, Mike, they went to that same set that they got the, the easy look the last time. All right, they went to it again, 
and unfortunately got a little bit of a moving screen called. Probably didn't need it. That takes a lot of guts. But listen, these are three high-level officials. Uh, what do you say? It's just, it's a heartbreaker. But 13 seconds left. You could see that they were looking to get Hayes free. They couldn't. They made some contact on the pick or the screen, and it got called, and uh, that's a tough call. They didn't even really need that, quite honestly, because you know what? As we were saying, at that point, St. Joe's with four fouls, they have to really be careful not to fight through screens or whatever else. You didn't need that, but listen, these are kids playing their hearts out, and, and just a tough, tough call. So right now, St. Joe's calls timeout, very able to advance the ball. If you're Cardinal O'Hara, you're looking at your stats saying, who are we gonna foul here? Who's the weakest free throw shooter that we can find to put on the line? Hodgins is gonna trigger in on the far sideline. Gets it into Williamson. She's in the backcourt, and finally she's grabbed by Williams. The Cardinal Harrow faithful asking for a backcourt, but that is not backcourt. You are allowed to have the ball tip off your hand and go back and get it. They fouled Williamson, probably a really bad move as Williamson. This is, this is probably the one girl you don't want to foul. Steps to the line, buries the first. There's a reason this young lady is going to play Division One, and you're seeing it right here. The only senior in the rotation means a little bit more to her than her teammates. Huge Good on two of two. Huge free throw. Huge. So now you have a three-point lead. Okay, 11.4 on the clock. We'll step away and be back with the final 11 seconds right after this. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Eleven seconds left in the game from here at Holy Trinity. Cardinal O'Hara's getting the ball back down by three. They get it in today. Malone Russell for three. Buries it. What a shot! Just absolutely amazing with people in their hands. Back the other way, Williamson. She stepped on the line. It's going back to O'Hara. What a turn of events. What a huge shot right there. We have 1.4 seconds left on the clock. Ball's on the sideline. What a tremendous shot. Had a hand in her face. She's done it all game long. Picked it up right there. Now, no fouls either way here, guys. No fouls either way. <laughs> One second left on the clock, tied at 68. Cardinal O'Hara to inbound on the far sideline in the corner. Jordan Williams gonna trigger it in. If you're St. Joe's, all you gotta do, just knock the ball down. Just knock it down. They get it into Hayes, turn around jumper, no good. We're going to overtime. I hope Mike Cadone has a sleeping bag with him. We're gonna be here all night. Wow. What a finish to that half. That is truly fitting to this game. We're gonna step away and be back with five minutes of bonus time, tied at 68. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Inside the 
here and launches the three. She hits. Robinson looks for help. Priester drives, banks it home. And that's going to do it. Sacred Heart with a convincing 10 point victory. We head to four minutes of overtime from here at Holy Trinity. Mike Trezza, Mike Adon on hand. Cardinal O'Hara and St. Joe's by the Sea. Tied at 68. Mike, this has been a barn burner. Tied at halftime, timed after four quarters. Belong Russell tries to get it inside. Ball is knocked away. Cordova quickly back the other way. Off the glass, she can't get it to go. And it's stolen by Williamson. Cordova, shot's no good, but Hodgins keeps it alive for Williamson. It's a good move, pull it out, just run your set right now. The first basket of overtime is crucial. Hodgins buries a three. No worries right there. Just pull it out, hit the three, and like I said, that's a huge shot to start this overtime. 71-68, 3.20 left in overtime. Cordova swipes it. Wow, that looked like she turned it over. No call. She did. She did and didn't need to go to the basket. One Ball on is two. loose. And Williamson dribbles outside, tries to reset the offense. You're right. Senior leadership. Here we go. Just reset your stuff. In the post, O'Connell. Now into the paint. Righty shots no good. But offensive board, Hodgins. She's in the paint. Shots knocked around, finally pulled down by Hayes. Right corner three from Day. That's no good. Williams is up with it. Her shot won't go. Scramble on the floor, and the ball's going to go to St. Joe. Big credit to St. Joe's, Mike. Heartbreaker. They literally had the game won. They got into overtime. Almost gave up a basket off the opening tip. Came down and really played great half-court offense to start overtime. Coach Suslak imploring his troops to get under control on offense. O'Connell looks inside. Nice dish, Williamson. No call on that shot. A lot of contact, but no call. That looked like she definitely got hit. Okay, but maybe in overtime they're going to let him play here a little bit. But every point is critical. I mean. Malone Russell's played a great game, including hitting the game time shot with a couple seconds left. In the post for Hayes, loses it, but they keep it. Malone Russell, right corner three, bounces high, but won't go in. Another huge rebound, Mike. O'Connell on the drive, knocks it down off the glass. Maria O'Connell with a huge basket, put St. Joe's up five. Here's Day on the drive, gets her own rebound. Day for three. Offensive board and stick back by Williams. That's it. O'Hara, no need to panic here. Don't rush. A two will get you where you need to go. Plenty of time left. Cordova dribbles outside, now hands off to Lanza. Lanza in the paint, puts it up, and can't get the friendly roll. Back the other way is McGriff. Day trying to find Hayes on the baseline, goes out of bounds, stays with O'Connor. Kazdalilu, Eagle Eye, right on the baseline, has the great call. Let's see what they run here. Looks like four across the foul line. No, a little back screen. Hayes, right wing, thought about the three, passed it up. Now spin in the lane. She's doubled. Puts it up and in, but she traveled first. Good call. Double team immediately right there. Now it gets interesting. We're under 45 seconds here, Mike. Under a minute to go in overtime. Near steal. It's controlled by Williamson. Now backs up on the dribble. Leaves it for Cordova. She's in the paint. 
Shot is up, it's good, and she's going to the line. Oh, that could be the dagger right there. Strong drive's gonna get a chance to go up six here, Mike. Found the seam, finishes left-handed, and one. You know, St. Joe's has struggled half-court offense for much of this game. I think in overtime, they've run their, their best four or five half-court sets because they took their time. And boy, that's senior leadership, that's experience. Cordova at the line where she's had a bit of a tough time till this point. Can't get that one down. Knocked around underneath. Oh, O'Connell saves it. Oh, what are you doing? Hodgins for three in and out. No need to shoot right there. Just pull it out, big girl. Hodgins tracks it down with down to 15 seconds left in the game. Somebody Looks foul this girl. Looks like they're going to concede. They don't want to foul Williamson. Now with down to six seconds left, here's a steal by Day. Below Russell, off the glass, she banks it in. Now we got a timeout. I I'll tell you, Mike, for the life of me, I can't understand why O'Hara didn't foul. I guess they were going to concede the game. Uh, and then what do you get? You get a foul. I mean, you get a steal and a score. So, of course. But uh, for all intents and purposes, this game is over. Congratulations to St. Joe's. Moving on to Hofstra. But what a ball game. What I can't understand is why St. Joe's took that shot. You said it right. All they had to do was dribble the clock out, wait to either be fouled or just dribble it out. Yeah, Coach Sussman, I took a look at him when that shot went up. He had his hands going through his hair saying, what are we doing? Luckily for them, it's probably not going to cost them. We are down to .2 seconds left. They'll inbound, and St. Joe's is going to advance. They will meet the winner of tonight's second semifinal, St. Mary's against Christ the King. But for the time being, in overtime, they beat Cardinal O'Hara of Buffalo. 75-72 final. We're back to wrap this up in just 30 seconds. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle, so you can feel better, faster. He pumps it inside to Kieran. Kieran launches the great G hit. Robinson looks for help. Priester drives, banks it home. And that's going to do it. Sacred Heart with a convincing 10-point victory. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Okay. What an absolutely instant classic, Mike. St. Joe's of Staten Island over Cardinal O'Hara of Buffalo, 75-72. An amazing game. I hope the next one's just as good. But let's put a bow on this one and take a look at our leading scorers. Well, I'll tell you, it starts and ends for St. Joe's with Angelina Hodges. 30 points. Didn't even score in the second quarter. Had nine in the fourth quarter. Big free throw in overtime. Uh, from there, also Daniel Williamson, 19. But more importantly than the points, Mike, I think you got to give all credit to that team because what a heartbreaker to have that dagger right there 
going into the end of the game, they knock it down. They could have had every opportunity to say, hey, you know what? We're deflated. It's their night for Cardinal Howard, but they came right back. It was that quiet confidence. What an absolute classic of a game. I hope that a lot of people tune into our broadcast and watch it. Uh, we're going to step away. We're back in just a few minutes, folks, with the second of our two semifinal state semifinal games. That one will feature St. Mary's and Christ the King. But for now, this is Mike Trezza for Mike Adone thanking you for watching. We'll be back with you in about 10 minutes.